So it's almost the end of 2023. And well, first of all, thank you to everybody that has decided to subscribe, especially people that are like my friends uh, from either real life or other parts of the internet. Uh, Shambodi comes to mind. Well, I can't remember what your YouTube username is. But uh, I wanted to go over a couple of things since we're coming up on the end of the year here. Uh, one, first of all, is just to uh, let anybody who wants to know that I finished the rough draft of my not very good novel. So uh, if you'd like to read it, I'll put a link in the description uh, to a place where the file is hosted and you can just download it. Uh, and there's also, I'll probably also make like a Google Doc version um, to let people highlight things because I'm very much looking for sort of critique partners and alpha slash beta readers. Uh, the other thing to go over though is that uh, over the course of this year I made a number of mistakes and uh, a lot of the YouTube channels I like at the end of the year they go back over mistakes they've made and uh, make a note of them as a sort of little uh, cumulative erratum on uh, everything they got wrong which uh, most of them are sort of have significant enough audiences that they get a lot of comments immediately telling them <laughs> when they've gotten something wrong, uh, whereas these are more just sort of uh, self-imposed. But uh, nevertheless, these are various things that are that are bothering me. Um, so uh, one thing that you might have noticed if you watched my video about Palomar Airport is it's not a factual inaccuracy per se, but I forgot to turn on the in-game audio, <laughs> so there is a sort of vaguely engine sounding noise, but that's actually just my computer fan. Uh, and uh, you'll notice that uh, as the throttle is increasing and decreasing, there's no change in the amount of noise, uh, but at least there's no factual errors in that one that I could find. Uh, let me know if there are, and uh, I guess I'll have to make uh, another update. Um, and so one that's particularly bothering me and that motivated me to want to go over these was in the uh, I guess it's now two videos ago, but I was talking about luminescence and incandescence, and I mistakenly said that phosphorescence is just luminescence with phosphorus-based compounds. Uh, that's not true at all. Uh, it is true that there's a lot of phosphorus-containing compounds that are phosphorescent, but the actual definition of phosphorescence, uh, it's a little bit loose, but depending on who you ask, it's generally that... Uh, Phosphorescence is anything where the you know you take a object and you shine some light on it and then it glows, but it ke it keeps glowing after you remove the light. So you know glow in the dark things that you sort of charge up by leaving them in the light and then they keep glowing. Those are phosphorescent. Versus fluorescent are things where you put them under like a black light or you know some some light and then they they glow. Um, and so those are both forms of photoluminescence. So you have some you know some wavelength of photon coming in and then you have some longer wavelength of photon coming out because you're you know exciting different states in the system and that is glowing and then they have some radiative lifetime and so phosphorescence are things that have very long radiative lifetimes um, you know on the order of you know seconds to even hours and typically that's because of a change in spin state um, although based on reading around, it's I, there's there's a little bit of a loose terminology, but I guess that maybe explains why I get it wrong. It's just ironic that I got that one wrong because my whole thesis was about uh, sort of well, it was about bringing a t type of uh, photoluminescence up to room temperature, but it was my thesis was about indirect excitons, um, and so it was all about controlling the radiative lifetime of and uh, temperature stability of. Uh, a type of photoluminescence, uh, but everything I did was you would probably classify as as fluorescence. Well, it did not. <laughs> hopefully, I'm not going to get my own thesis wrong here. But the it the the type of excitons I was exciting do not involve a change in spin state when they recombine. Uh, and also, to me, long lifetime means like you know, order of at least tens of nano you know like tens of nanoseconds. Um, versus like really short lifetimes like picoseconds, uh, which is what most radiative lifetimes are, even for most fluorescent processes, versus phosphorescence, it's, you know, order seconds. It's, you know, much, 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 much longer. Uh, but anyways, but I even made a little erratum video, but in that video I even sort of, I said that it was, you know, phosphorescence is because there's a change in spin state, and I put a little asterisk where I said usually, and it's, 
yeah. So anyways, it's it's complicated. I put a link to the Libra text on phosphorescence versus fluorescence, which it's actually kind of funny that I never came across that terminology during my thesis on a type of photoluminescence, but that's because we would never even think, we, we just weren't studying anything other than essentially fluorescence, uh, and so we never had a reason to make a distinction between the two. And also, things are a little bit different when you're talking about a semiconductor versus when you're talking about molecules, because when you're talking about some like covalent lattice structure. Uh, anyways, I'm getting too into the weeds, into the weeds this and I'll probably make a well, many more videos on photoluminescence and the optical properties of solids and uh, matter in general in the future because that's what I did my whole PhD on. But uh, moving on, um, so I did a video about electronic warfare and I completely forgot to talk about radar warning receivers which are actually really important because uh, I had this whole thing about active versus passive systems and radar warning receivers are a very very important passive system. Um, I talked about sort of using things like a radar warning receiver that are more sophisticated that sort of give in addition to just giving you an alert that you're being uh, spiked by a radar um, can also be used to track you know a target based on their radio emissions but just the I didn't really talk about just you know like the most basic important feature of passive those passive systems is just the warning to be like hey somebody's trying to use a radar to scan you and yes maybe you can use that to figure out where where they're like you know launching their radar emissions from but uh, also you should just uh, take note of that and perhaps take some defensive action so i didn't even forgot to mention that um i made two roller on videos this year and the second one was because i sort of didn't you know i made a bunch of sort of mistakes in the first one and they weren't big mistakes there were a bunch of things where i just sort of i'd say one thing and then i would immediately correct it but it was just kind of awkward and weird um i honestly feel like i did a kind of a better job of explaining it in that video though because i was just sort of fresh um, I don't know, but anyways, the second video has way fewer views, and I don't think it's because of the algorithm or whatever. I think it's just because it's, I, I, I don't think I, uh, did as very good a job. I did not do as good a job explaining in that one, uh, despite the fact that I had then had much more sophisticated graphics to work with, because I've learned Blender in the intermediate, intervening time. Um, all right, next up. Uh, I did a whole video on neutrinos and dark matter, and I forgot to mention that there are theories of hot dark matter. Um, that one's not that big an oversight, because almost all theories of dark matter are theories of cold dark matter. Um, you could have a theory of hot dark matter. I'm not going to get into why that's problematic, but uh, it's not impossible, so I should have at least mentioned it. Um, let's see, and I... I I was during when I was doing a whole video. Another thing is I did a whole video on mass energy equivalents, and it was in response to somebody else's video complaining about how they teach mass energy and equivalents incorrectly. And her video was was mostly very very good, but then she made one egregious mistake in like one little you know throwaway line. But it was a very very important mistake, and so I made a whole video responding to it. Um, but then I made a, a mistake, not, a, but my mistake, I, I got sort of saved by the bell and then I said, I said, what I said was, you know, something about, you know, a change in, I said, you know, particle number is preserved, which is different than conserved. Um, you know, preserved doesn't necessarily have any meaning. Cons conserved has a very specific meaning. It means, you know, the net particle number doesn't change, you know, number of particles minus the number of antiparticles. Uh, and what I meant was that the gross number of particles doesn't change, right? So there's no matter-antimatter annihilation at all. Um, although even during matter-antimatter annihilation, the net number of particles does not change because, you know, basically every matter particle counts as plus one and every antimaterical antimatter particle counts as minus one so you have plus one and minus one which is equal to zero and then when they annihilate you just have nothing which is also zero um but so a little bit pedantic but that whole video was complaining about sort of you know pedantry and um, so it was particularly like yikesy to me that i i made that mistake um sort of saved by the bell that i did at least I, at least i said preserve and not conserve but still it was a a mistake on my part um Let's see. Oh, I I correct. So I, I made a video about landing at San Diego's airport, which I actually think was pretty decent. Uh, but I did make a couple of mistakes. I corrected those mistakes with like text overlays, but I should have just reshot it. I, I don't know why I didn't. Um, I think it's in part because, well, it, all of these are because I'm still trying to figure out what I'm doing. 
But uh, anyways, I made a bunch of mistakes and then I fixed them with text overlays. So, you know, I said east instead of west several times and, um, you know, I misidentified some, excuse me, aircraft models that were on the tarmac and a couple of other things. Um, oh, and then I uploaded a video about my own thesis and I actually, the in the video proper, I didn't make any mistakes, but then in the comments, somebody asked a question and I actually gave a response which was incorrect. So that's, yeah, not good. <laughs> but um, basically somebody asked about something called tryons and I said, oh, you can have, you know, higher order than just tryons. They're just statistically unlikely. And that's sort of true, but tryons form, tryons are, so I, I studied something called excitons, which is something called an electron, which is of course negatively charged, and then a whole, something called a hole, which is uh, just the absence of an electron, but in a in a solid. So the whole thing is electrically neutral. And so when you like move an electron out of a particular like place, so that basically there's not enough electrons in one area, um, that deficiency of electrons itself kind of acts like a like almost like an antimatter particle, where it's positively charged and the opposite of electron. But anyways. But I misspoke and I said, oh, you know, you could have, you know, quadrons and quintons. And I, you, you sort of can, um, but trions form because there's more than one spin state available to the electron or to the hole, depending. And uh, you can get, you know, one electron, you know, you can have, you know, spin up hole and then a spin up electron and a spin down, yeah, spin up electron and a spin down electron, both bound to that hole. And... You could also have, you know, spin up hole, spin down hole bound to a spin up electron and a spin down electron, but they're not like that. And so that that's called a biexiton. Uh, and you could, in principle, also have, you know, a hole with a spin up electron, a spin down electron, and then another spin up electron, but in a different state on in terms of either position or momentum rather than spin. Um, that's not super likely and I don't know if there's any situation where that type of excitation is actually stable though. Uh, but anyways, I, I corrected the comment um, and maybe I'll talk about tryons and all these things in the future. Um, there's a lot of videos about spin so you know I'll probably do my own just because I'm a small channel and I could use the video practice uh, but there's you know, already tons of videos explaining spin and nobody really understands it so maybe I could put my own a spin on it um, plus also but then also it would be good to do an explanation of, of trions and bi excitons and excitons in general um, because that's what I studied so it would be and did like original research on so it would be good to try explaining that and uh, so then I in addition to this channel I have a, a lecture series and I made uh, a couple of mistakes in that uh, one was I just doing like a data analysis tutorial and I forgot that I had um, data series which had uh, even spacing in the the y-axis basically and uneven spacing in the x-axis but I treated it like the other way around uh, and then I made a follow-up video explaining how to correctly deal with that type of data um, but still that was a so it wasn't too bad um, but uh, you know I'm trying to impart knowledge on people I should impart accurate knowledge you know and and so then I also made a mistake in my most recent one of those where I've been using the Open Computer Vision Library. Um, there's some technical difficulties with it. And as a result, I kind of did some things incorrectly and it wasn't too bad, but I basically said that something came to its terminal velocity much faster than it really did. And I was able to finally go back and get OpenCV to track something that it was previously not tracking. And I realized that it does reach terminal velocity before it hits the ground. But like I dropped something from, you know, a few feet up with a parachute and it actually took like, you know, half its fall at least um, to really reach terminal velocity. Um, so, uh, you know, and I was just like, oh, you know, within the first, you know, little bit it reaches it, but that wasn't true. Uh, anyways. I think that's all the mistakes I made. Um, there's probably more. <laughs> and I guess I'll stitch these sections together. Also, not sure what I'm gonna do about the section in the middle where my, like, the image is sort of flickering a little bit. Uh, but anyways, um, yeah, let me know if you uh, find any other mistakes. Um, I strive for accuracy as much as possible. Um, also, if you want to uh, be a critique partner or a alpha slash beta reader for a sci-fi novel, um, yeah, uh, 
follow the link to uh, this thing. <laughs> all right. Uh, hope you all had a good year. Uh, hope next year is even better. Bye.